Hello, I'm Eric Petaplace. I'm systems librarian at California College of the Arts, which is a small art and design school in the California Bay Area region. Uh, and my presentation is called, Where Was I Again? Making Koha Recall User Actions After Login. Uh, to describe this problem a little bit, it's basically that Koha doesn't remember the user context when they're in the middle of an action. So if you are unauthenticated looking at Koha and you perform an action, it will sign you in, but then just take you to your user account page, forgetting that you were in the middle of a, a process. Um, that can be very frustrating for users to encounter. Um, sometimes it can be difficult for them to find a way to pick up that process and go back to the origin point. So for instance, if they're placing a hold on a bib record, they have to find the bib again in the catalog. And a lot of times users spend quite a bit of time searching for what they're looking for and then they go to place that hold and the fact that they get lost on the login process is frustrating. Um, and it wastes their time, which is just always bad, obviously, because they have to repeat the actions of finding something or getting back to where they were to, to finish it. And it just generally doesn't match the expectations that people have for web applications that are coming out of interacting with larger, more sophisticated systems. Um, so this is a problem with uh, CAS authentication, which is what we use. So we have a central authentication system that actually is outside of Koha that we go utilize for it, as well as many other systems. So I don't know if this applies to people who are using internal accounts. Maybe Koha is, is better about that. I haven't actually tested, but it's certainly a big problem for us, and it will be a problem for any other school that uses CAS. Um, our solution to this was to employ OPAC user JS. Um, for people who aren't familiar with that, uh, this is where you paste all your wonderful jQuery snippets that you get off of the Koha Wiki or learn about on the listserv, or if you're confident enough to customize things like we are, you write your own code and you put it in there and it gets loaded on every page load and lets you have extensive control over customizing Koha. So we use it um, for a number of reasons. We use it to hack around bugs. So if there's a, a problem, we can actually just fix it in the catalog sometimes without ever needing to wait for a uh, Koha patch to come in or getting an upgrade. Um, we can customize our display so that certain records look different depending on properties uh, utilizing OPAC user JS. And um, what I would argue uh, we're doing in this case is to add missing functionality. So Koha is missing this uh, context, this ability to remember uh, what a user is doing after the login process, and we have simply patched that functionality at the OPAC user JS level. We've added it back in. This is essentially the data flow that I mapped in my mind of how this will work. So. This is just um, one example, actually, but we can concretely step through it here. Um, so say a user is on a search results page or a big detail page, and they click something that says place a hold. Um, they're taken to the login page. Uh, on the, the login page, um, we will store the bib numbers because those will still be in the URL, as we'll see in a minute. The, the URL will actually be the like OPAC reserves um, URL, but users will be seeing the login form page. Um, so we'll, that'll give us an opportunity to store the bib numbers and remember what the user is doing. Then they'll perform the CAS login. So this is actually a step where this goes out to another website and something happens and that website sends um, credentials back to Koha saying like, okay, this person successfully uh, <clears throat> authenticated against our system. And normally what happens is the user is taken to the user account page. And this is the breakage, right? Is they, they land on the user account page, but that wasn't what they anticipated. They anticipated being able to complete the process they had started. Um, so what we do is we, again, use JavaScript and we check to see if we have any knowledge about the user context. Do we have a bid member? Do we know that they're placing a hold? And if we know that, we can immediately redirect them over to uh, the middle of the process they were completing. So the holds page with a particular uh, Biblio number filled into the URL. Um, the questions that that springs up are several. So we have that general arching idea in our head of how things should work, but what about the specifics? So 
here are the kind of three major questions we need to answer. Um, how are we going to store this user data? So what technology will we use to remember what the user was doing? How do we know when a user is logging in? So how will we know when we're on the login page? Um, that may seem like it'll be obvious, but I'll, I'll show later why that's a little less intuitive than you might think. And then what actions do we need to fix in this manner? So what are the sorts of processes that have this problem that get interrupted? Um, and we fixed several of them, but there might actually be others that I'm, I'm just not aware of. And we'll, because we have this framework in place, it's pretty easy for me to just fix the other ones by writing you know, about 10 lines of code. So let's go and answer some of these questions. Um, first of all, in terms of storing what's going on, that's traditionally been something that's done with uh, cookies in the browser. Uh, most people are probably familiar with cookies. It's how authentication is done. Uh, Koha uses cookies. It's just incredibly common. Um, cookies are really messy to deal with, in my opinion. Um, they're a very long set of often quite opaque data separated by semicolons. You have to parse this string using something like a reg regular expression and uh, split out meaningful data. So just generally, um, I don't like the cookie API. I haven't worked with it very often, so I'm not super familiar with it. Uh, you can use plugins or um, other sorts of libraries to make operating with cookies very easy, but this just is innately something I'm not that interested in. What I am fairly interested in was the uh, browser storage API, which was, uh, at the time I, f I first created this, a uh, pretty stable and, and well-used API um, under kind of that arching HTML5 set of specifications that help people write web applications easily. And I think that the browser storage API is just incredibly clean, um, basically needs no understanding at all. It's just incredibly intuitive and uh, supported widely enough. So it's, uh, you can utilize either session storage or local storage. Those are underneath the, the window object, which is the global object in um, uh, JavaScript running in the browser context. And I have some just basic code on the right-hand side there that I think um, even if you're not a programmer, you can probably understand what's going on. Um, so I've uh, defined a variable storage that points at the, the storage object. Um, and then I can do things like set item bib hold and set the value of that item to, to one, two, three, four, say the biblio number, for instance, that I'm interested in. And then when I do storage dot get item bib hold, I receive that one, two, three, four. So I get that number back because I just set that. And then I can also um, delete that or uh, clear it out of the storage using those, those last couple lines. So I just find this to be very intuitive and clean and easy to work with. It does, it does what I want, which is not super complicated. I don't need to store a lot of data. I kind of just need to store that Biblio number and this does it in a very simple, and easy to understand way. And I had mentioned uh, browser support. Um, because this is a new feature, it's, it's definitely worthwhile checking to see how well it's supported in browsers. So I go to this website um, called Can I Use, typically to research features like this and it's very widely supported. Um, this is just an excerpt of various browsers that are supporting, but basically other than a few kind of like mobile device browsers that are lesser used, this is supported. Um, for our users, they tend to, we're, we're a Mac school, we have very up-to-date um, computers and everything, so uh, I would say that our supported rate is probably even better than 95%. It's probably very, very high. And then you do have, like, it's not great if this happens, but if the storage doesn't work, it does degrade simply to how Koha normally works. So it's not gonna break anything if people don't have access to this storage device. Um, so just worth noting there. And this is why I was comfortable using this because I thought the, the browser support was absolutely acceptable. The next question was, am I on the login page? Um, and typically what we do for many of our OPAC user JS customizations is we check against the page URL to know where we are. So am I on a bib detail page? Am I on the search page? Am I on the user account page? All those sorts of things. Um, but what's interesting in this case is that the login template actually can appear at multiple paths because what will happen is when somebody clicks on the place reserved link, you are actually taken to the OPAC reserve URL, but you're shown the template for uh, the login page. And down below here, um, we see, this is actually how I, this is kind of a aside, how I used to have to check that the 
login template was being used, um, it wasn't very easy because there was basically no uh, element on the page that you could check against, um, but that's gotten easier as we'll see right now. So just really briefly show you um, what it looks like when you're on the login page. So look in the URL first. We're actually on opac-reserve.pl, the, the holds page. And you can see the parameter in the URL there to the Biblio number um, 59383 is, is being stored. So we're, we're not actually on like what you would think of as like a login.html page. We're on the reserves page. But we're being shown the HTML of the, the login process. And then if you inspect the HTML of the page, you can see there, um, first of all, that second line with the all caps template file, that was what I used to have to check. But um, in, a, in a recent Koha update, uh, somebody added an ID to the body tag that's ID OPAC login page. So that makes my life infinitely easier because now what we do is we check against that. So that's how we know we're on the login page. We don't look at the URL, we look at this ID on the uh, body tag and see if that exists. And then that tells us that we're in the process of logging in. And our final question that we had was, what are the actions where they get interrupted? Where do we see this problem? And so these are the ones that, that we fixed. As I alluded to earlier, there may be others that we should be looking into and fixing, but these are the ones that have come up, generally reported by users, and that we've gone ahead and fixed. So the first one and the example I'm kind of going to use here, because I think it's probably the most common um, use case, is placing a hold. So you're not signed in, but you, you try to place a hold. That would normally get interrupted, but we fix that. Um, making a purchase suggestion. Uh, we link to um, Koha's purchase suggestion page from our main website, and so it's possible for people to see it when they're not authenticated, and normally that would cause a problem. Um, they would get interrupted. Also, requesting an article. So when people are looking at serials um, in our catalog, they can request a specific article within the serial, and that suffers from this problem where they get logged in and get landed on the user account page. Um, and then finally, if uh, people are familiar with the restricted page, this is a page that is only visible if you're signed into Koha. So it's a good way to share uh, private information with only your um, users if you don't have another means of doing that. Uh, so we, we have been utilizing this um, up until recently. And that also has that same problem where you log in you land on the user account page, not on the restricted page itself. So now I get the uh, privilege of doing a live demo at a conference that isn't really live, so I just had to take advantage of that. So we're gonna step out of my um, presentation here. And the first thing I'm gonna show you is what would normally happen, just to, to demonstrate the problem um, before we apply our customization. So here I am, you can see that I'm unauthenticated, because it's asking me to log into my account, uh, but I'm still able to select this place hold button. So I'm gonna go ahead and place a hold on this title. Um, now this is what our CAS login page happens. So we're, at, we're now outside of Koha, authenticating against CAS. Um, go ahead and do that. And we'll bounce back to Koha, but what happened? So I was trying to place a hold, and now I'm back on my user account page which is not where that happens. And very jarring, confusing for the user. I have to um, find this title again. And you know, if, I, if I didn't have it like memorized in my head, that would maybe be difficult. I can just type it in. Now I would be able to click place hold. Okay, finally, we're, we're back where we wanna be completing this action. Um, so I'm going to actually sign out now so that we can demonstrate this the other way around. Um, so now we will take a quick look at our um, project, our Koha Snippets project, which was linked earlier that contains all of our customizations, um, including OPAC user JS code. Um, so you can see we're in the catalog JS folder here, um, and we have many, many customizations listed out here. All of the ones pertaining to this precise um, feature are contained in this one file, login-redirects.js. Um, and you can see I've, I've written a lot of comments here. Um, these are basically those four actions 
that I talked about, right? So I, I just noted them down and we have some variables to find up front. And what I did to make our, our login not work this first time was I commented out this first section um, that is uh, the holds section. So this is why, why holds work. So I'm going to um, uncomment really quickly uh, this code. Um, it basically has two sections to it. Um, the first part is checking if we're on the login screen and we're placing reserve. Um, it clears out um, session storage so it doesn't get confused about what action you're in the middle of. Uh, this could happen if somebody begins one action, then navigates away and begins another. We would have two actions stored and we wouldn't know which one to complete. So what I do is generally just clear um, the existing session storage so that we can, we can go forward. Um, then I store um, the bib. Now what's tricky about the way reserves work is it might be um, biblio number in the URL. It also might be biblio numbers, uh, plural. Um, and the parameter that you want to redirect to naturally is going to be different too in these two cases. So uh, depending on each of these, I store um, the bib number or the multiple bibs in these two um, different storage uh, objects. So this CCA bib hold or CCA bib holds, um, which is precisely that API we saw earlier about um, session storage. And then um, the second half to the holds customization is later checking when we're on the user page, remember. Uh, so this is that, that second in that diagram time that uh, JavaScript is utilized. We check to see, okay, do we have anything in the storage? And if so, let's redirect. So that's what this um, location equals in the browser. You can set the window.location uh, to a string and it will redirect the user. So we are redirecting back to the OPAC reserve. Okay, so um, as if I had just written this, let's apply the uh, customization to our OPAC user JS. Uh, another um, nice feature I have in our Koha snippets project is I have a bunch of NPM tasks. So I can actually go NPM run CJS, uh, which stands for catalog JS. And this does a few things. It um, minifies, <coughs> minifies and combines uh, these large number of JavaScript files that we have. Um, and then it opens OPAC user JS after putting all that code on my clipboard. So this just makes it really quick for me to iterate and work on something. And I, I run this command over and over again, and I keep getting um, minified code so that it loads just a little bit quicker. You could probably skip that part. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make a huge difference, but I, I like to minify things when I can. And um, I can paste it in there because that was just already on my clipboard. So just a nice little um, feature that we have. So I've pasted that in there. Now we have that customization in place. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it's like to place a hold now. Um, I'm gonna refresh the page so that we get that fresh JavaScript and then go ahead and place a hold. Now uh, already the customization has done something, right? Because now it knew that we are on the login page uh, by looking at the template, by looking at, at the, the body um, of the HTML for that ID, and it recorded something. So you can actually see this in the, um, in the browser. Uh, you can go to the browser dev tools and you can look at the application tab here. And if I look at my session storage, that should expand. There it is, CCA bib hold, and then the value is the biblio number. So this is just inspecting um, what my JavaScript has done and uh, in assuring you that things are working the way I, uh, we expect them to. So now I'm gonna go ahead and log into my account. And again, I'll, I'll be popped out to something else, but I was already authenticated against CAS, so it didn't, didn't make me log in that time, bounced me right back. And you may have seen that the user account page blinked for a second because it does actually need to load. But then as soon as my OPAC user JS has a chance to execute, as soon as it has a chance to check the storage and it sees, oh, we have something in the CCA bib hold object. Let's go ahead and redirect over to the holds page. And here I am, you can see confirm holds for my user. And then it shows me that exact title. So basically now we've 
had a um, proper web application experience where we placed a hold and that's actually what happened instead of getting distracted and landing on the, the user account page. A similar thing we've done is we've taken an action that didn't used to exist for unauthenticated users. And because now we have this new capability to remember the user's state after the login process uh, has completed, we actually can add new functionality to the OPAC. So we utilize lists quite a lot and we like to encourage uh, our faculty members to utilize them as well but there's no save to this list uh, button or feature if you're not signed into Koha. So we were able to add that and this uh, customization is in our save to lists file uh, and we're looking at kind of the, the logic down at the bottom here which is saying um, if I'm not logged in, add this link um, to a couple different places. So we add it to the OPAC detail page, the, the bib display page or the OPAC search page. Um, so we just add a link in, in particular areas. And then the second half of this is analogous to what we've seen earlier. Um, when we're on the, uh, the login page, we're checking against this session storage to see, oh, are we saving to a list? And if so, we redirect to that appropriately. Um, so let me just show real quickly what that looks like. Again, I can search for I'm just gonna search for art so that we'll, we'll get a lot of results and we'll see it on the main search page. Um, so there it is, save to your lists. So again, that, that link would not display normally, but we added this customization. And if I go ahead and take a look at this third mind, uh, now it also displays here, save to your lists. So I'll go ahead and click that and it's just gonna look exactly the same. Uh, we'll see a flash of the user account page, the flash flash is a little bit longer that way, actually, which is nice because I get to demonstrate how it's working, right? So flash of the user account page, but as soon as the JavaScript has a chance to execute, it says, oh, we're actually in the middle of um, saving a list. Let me redirect. So it redirects back here um, and how this one works a little bit different. It actually redirects you back to um, the display page. So you can see um, behind that pop-up, we're, we're back on that actual bid detail page but it clicks the add, add to list thing so that you get the pop-up, which is the, the normal experience of adding to a list. And now I could save that to my list. So that, that's an example of a feature. We're not fixing a problem now, we're actually adding a new feature for unauthenticated users that didn't previously exist. So uh, what are the next steps for this feature? Um, Really, this should be something in Bugzilla so that the community can work on something that's better that uh, utilizes the server to record state so we don't have that flash of the user account page um, loading, right? This is something that Koha should be doing natively by itself without necessarily having a, uh, a customization sit on top. Um, I did a little bit of searching and I couldn't really find an existing bug report to build off of. Um, which I found a little bit surprising, so I may have missed one. If somebody knows of a bug report um, existing that I could uh, add my thoughts on or just um, link to how we have worked around this problem so that other people can see that and employ, employ this in their own Koha instances, that would be great. I would be really curious to, to take a look at that. So if you do know the, the bug number, um, please uh, do send it to me, that would be nice. Um, but otherwise, I, I will open one eventually um, when I get some free time. We've had a, a very busy semester, as I'm sure some other people uh, are having as well, uh, given the, the current climate and difficulties that are going on. Um, but I, I want to think more about the best way to frame this bug and articulate it, um, because uh, how we have worked around it is not at all how Koha should address it once and for all. There are also some improvements we could make to the way that this uh, feature is implemented. Um, the login redirects uh, code that I wrote, it works, but it's not very easily reusable or easy to add to additional actions or to have other libraries employ. Um, I would argue um, if we take a look at the file again, uh, you can kind of see 
just at a high level, it looks a little bit redundant, which tells me that there's probably a way to abstract things and make it work a little bit more smoothly with less redundant code that way. Um, so something like a function that could be called a handful of times to sort of add these features would be better than repeating all of this logic um, over and over again. And then things like storing things in a data item with a CCA prefix is probably not the best thing if other people are gonna copy and reuse this code because they'll wonder what that means. It, it doesn't mean anything to other libraries. And then finally, um, my idea of clearing session storage fixes this edge case of somebody performing an action, not completing it, starting to perform another one and, and causing an issue that way. However, um, it does wipe out the entirety of session storage, which is not really what I want to do, right? I want to wipe out just this sort of feature. So if Koha itself down the line utilizes session, session storage in some way, I don't want to accidentally wipe out that data because I'm using a, a pretty broad um, feature here and just wiping out all of the, the key value pairs that are being stored in that session storage. So there are ways that that could be improved for sure. There also may be some actions that we missed. Um, I did a kind of cursory review before this presentation and couldn't really find any or more um, new features uh, that could be added along the lines of the save to lists thing where it's something that uh, unauthenticated users weren't able to do previously, but we would like to provide them the offer to. I did notice one pretty small thing, which is that when you save um, titles to your cart, uh, there's a link to save those titles to your list. Well, that link doesn't appear if you're not signed in. And I could add that just extrapolating from the way that we already do things. It, it wouldn't even be that hard to add this as well. So that's a, another small improvement that I could make. So that was my presentation. Um, I would ha be happy to be, take some questions right now. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope everyone is staying safe and staying sane in these pretty wild times. Uh, I use the username FET23, P-H-E-T-T-E-2-3, -E pretty much everywhere I can online. So if you wanna find me and ask a question specifically about uh, this, presentation that I've given or about Koha or about anything in library technology, um, I would be happy to try and help, happy to answer your questions. And yeah, thank you for having me. And